This place has so many wild dogs. Four to six shots in pretty rapid succession, which... Hey guys, Spagaver with Spagaver Backpacking here. And today I'm heading out onto the Palmetto Trail. And this is the High Hills of Santee Passage. Uh, I've been out here before, made a, a wrong turn, actually right near where I'm standing. Uh, I'm in the Mill Creek County Park right now, up in the campground area. Uh, last time I was here, there was nobody here. Today, you know, this place seems to be pretty packed. Horses, bunch of campers up here. So, uh, a little bit busier than the last time I was up here. But, I made a, a wrong turn right off the bat here and ended up hiking for about five miles, but then the trail just kind of faded out, got on some backcountry roads, and uh, couldn't figure out where the trail went. Turns out I was never on the Palmetto Trail. Uh, what looked like a trail wasn't the trail. It was just a, a different trail. It was a horse trail, I believe, uh, rather than the actual Palmetto Trail. So, today I'm going to do the, the correct trail, and we're going to head up to... Poinsett State Park and maybe maybe pass through the park and head up a little bit further north. That's about nine to ten miles from here. Uh, so a little bit of a day, a little bit of a chilly morning today. It's uh, about 42 degrees right now. When I got out to my truck this morning to warm it up it was about 38 so it's warmed up a little bit. Uh, it's not supposed to get all that warm today. 48 is about the high for today so nice cool day. It'd be a good chance tonight to test out that incubator and the Burrow 20. So. I'll see you guys down the trail. Recently, Syntax77, another YouTube guy, uh, a whole lot more popular than me, and for good reason, he's got some great videos. He did a, a show or a video on his, his channel about hiking during hunting season, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. You can see that I'm wearing a nice bright red shirt. Uh, two reasons. One, it's cold out here and it's a nice warm shirt. And two, hopefully it helps me to be seen a little bit better. Now in this area that I'm hiking right now, the only trail that's open this time of year during hunting season is the Palmetto Trail, which I happen to be on. All the other trails out here are closed because of the hunting. Now I've been hiking mostly on like some Jeep road. Right now I'm on like a almost like a four-wheeler track, and it's pretty sandy. I've seen a lot of deer prints uh, in through here. And actually, just, to, just before I started this, I stirred up two deer that went running away. But, you know, as long as you know the regulations, know what's going on around you, you know, you're pretty safe out here. There aren't people just going around shooting at anything that moves. Uh, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble doing something like that. So those that are out here hunting know the rules, know what they're going after, and are, are making sure, you know, most, most people don't have doe tags, so they've got to make sure that the deer has horns or antlers before they take a shot. So I feel pretty safe out here. You know, precaution, wear something bright, make yourself known, and uh, should be just fine out here. I've been on the trail now for about an hour, hour and a half, probably four to four and a half miles into the trail. And I just came upon this, this little shelter thing here. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Uh, you walk in there and there's some, some old signs, an old mailbox that says maps, but when you look in it, it's just full of uh, garbage and cobwebs. So uh, not, not exactly sure what this place is. So the forests around here are mostly composed of 
all of these pine trees. As I look around, you can see them all. What's nice about them is they're pretty bare the first, I don't know, 50 feet up the tree before you get to the actual branches. So as you're walking along as a hammock camper, you just see possibilities all around you. I mean, just everywhere there's possibilities. And you know, you get to a, a spot like this with the sun kind of peeking through, uh, kind of the, the ground covered in the, the pine straw. And it just, it looks very inviting, but we're not there yet. So time to keep going. Hey guys, so we're down in one of the more prevalent areas, uh, at least of the low country. We're kind of getting out of the low country a little bit up here on the Palmetto Trail on the, the high hills of the Santee section, uh, or passage as they call it. Uh, but we're still gonna run into some swamps. This section that I'm in right now has been really, really tough to follow. Um, as you can see, as we look around, there's been a lot of logging, a lot of trees been taken down. Here on the ground, you can see, there's one of the signs that you're supposed to be looking for. Um, really what I've been having to do is look around the trees until I find these markings. Because the trail, as you can see, probably went somewhere over through here but it's just been all tore up by logging trucks coming in. And so there's really no sign of the trail uh, other than these markings on the tree. So I'll come up to this one and then start looking around. I can see two more in that general direction, um, but really <laughs> absolutely no discernible trail through here. It's all find the markers and piece together a, uh, a route between them. So I made it up into Poinsett State Park and the trail has gotten a lot, a lot nicer than what it was on the other part of the uh, Palmetto Trail. At least now there's a, a nice solid tread beneath my feet. Got some water, uh, scenery's a lot better. And there's actually a little bit of elevation going up and down. A little, few more contour lines on the map around here. So I'm gonna keep going and uh, see where it takes me. So I'm here along the Coquie Trail, uh, which is also the Palmetto Trail here in Poinsett State Park. And I came to this cool little, uh, little shelter area. And so what I think I'm gonna do is stop here for a little while, go up, enjoy the, uh, the benches that are there, and make myself a little bit of lunch. So that's what I'm gonna do. So it's actually cool enough while I'm sitting here waiting for lunch that uh, I went ahead and put the big puffy jacket on brought this out here just because the temps were going to be cold. Uh, it's not really that it's that cold right now, it's the wind. Uh, that wind is whipping pretty good. I'm trying to get myself kind of hidden behind here, but the wind has kind of shifted a couple of times since I've been in here. Uh, but I'm staying nice and warm in this, you know, nice big down mountain hardware jacket, keep you, keep you warm. And right down here I've got the uh, water coming up to a boil. It's on the little fancy feast stove that I made. And I'm gonna cook up some uh, some of my own chicken tortilla soup, which I'm putting into another video. So I really like this spot right here. Um, you know, I've got the the pond slash lake behind me here at Poinsett State Park. 
And then you've got the little spillway. So you got the spillway here, little berm dam. And it goes down and there's a little footbridge over there that the Palmetto Trail actually goes down. So Palmetto co Trail comes down here, wraps around, and then goes over the, uh, the berm dam here and over to the park headquarters over on the other side of the lake area over there. Here's another really, really cool spot uh, here at Poinsett State Park. And this is another, another spillway coming out. Here you can see where it goes under. That's the bridge that the Palmetto Trail comes across there. And it comes down under this footbridge. And then it goes down into the bottom, into the boggy, swampy area. Tell you what, man, that sun went down and it got chilly quickly. So, uh, yeah, gonna be a cold, cold night tonight, but gonna have a warm dinner. Big, big warm dinner in my belly. Keep me warmer. Good morning everybody. It is uh, morning of day two. I'm out here along the Palmetto Trail uh, just on the outskirts of Poinsett State Park here in South Carolina and I had an interesting night to to put it mildly. Uh, so first the, the good, the really good. Uh, first night with this incubator zero where it really got tested. I think it was it was slotted to get down to 28 degrees last night and I think it I didn't I actually didn't think it got down to that until I got out of my uh, quilts this morning and went out to go pee and then I realized it's freaking cold outside um, but it was the first night that I have been so comfortable in my hammock I haven't had to move positions I didn't shift positions I was warm all night long like not just I'm kind of warm, I'm comfortable. I, I was toasty, I was seriously warm. Uh, I am absolutely sold on the full length under quilt. Um, man, zero degree last night was absolutely amazing, incredible. Um, so, <laughs> next part, this place has so many wild dogs. Uh, you know, I'd seen, I'd seen a couple of dogs being used by a hunter yesterday so I thought that there was like a hunting camp set up around me and that's what the dogs were barking about all night long coyotes and dogs all around me like 360 
all around me. Um, actually had to had to yell and scare off at least two from right here, pretty much in my camp last night at some point. Um, so didn't get a whole lot of great sleep because I kept being woke up by barking, howling, uh, yelling, yelping dogs all night long. And then this morning, uh, I'm not exactly sure what time, it, it was starting to get light out, so it was probably whatever official sunrise was. Uh, I don't know what the rules in South Carolina for hunting are, but I would say on the dot that they were allowed to, uh, probably, with it, well, right at that time, the gun started going off, and it was um, about five minutes, and in that five minutes, I probably heard close to 200 shots, and since then, it's been every every few minutes, I'm hearing two to three, and uh, what's odd is it's not normally just a shot. It's usually like four to six shots in pretty rapid succession, which... Uh, there, there were two more. You just heard two a second before that. Um, lots of, lots of gunshots early this morning. I didn't hear any yesterday, so to be hearing this many right now is kind of, it's been kind of weird. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get up, get out of here, and and get started with some breakfast and just a little bit. Get some coffee going because everyone knows I need coffee in the morning. I don't really operate very well without coffee. So, I'm going to go get that going.
So this morning I got up and uh, made myself some breakfast, did some baking, made a blueberry muffin. Turned out perfect. Um, I changed up one thing about how I did it and I think it made a big difference. You know, <clears throat> I've been putting oil in the, the pan that I'm baking in, the little baking dish. Really, it's a 12 ounce uh, pot from Batch Stoves. But trekking, carrying oil with you is a little bit messy, a little bit difficult, and you always have to worry about it breaking open and the oil getting all over the place. So this time what I did was I uh, took a little bit of Crisco and put it into a baggie and then just use that, spray it around inside. It was easy to make sure that the whole inside was coated. And then I put it on the, on the little uh, choke hazard stove. And then as I was breaking down camp, it was over baking away. And pretty much by the time I was done breaking down camp and getting stuff situated, it was just about ready to go. And then I made a cup of coffee while it cooled. So my coffee was ready and the muffin was ready right at the same time, which uh, was great. So I'm still here in Poinsett State Park. You can see there's a little bit more elevation here than on the other stuff I was on today, which was mostly flat, or yesterday. Um, so I'm heading out today. Probably won't be doing a whole lot of filming just because it's an out and back. I mean, I'm going out the same way that I came in. So really there's not gonna be all that much new to see. Um, so another piece of gear I wanted to talk about while I was out here was the Dutchware gear uh, Argon pillow that was in my stocking for Christmas. It's a uh, light pillow, you know, it's, it's lighter than my Wilderness Logics down pillow with the, with the uh, fleece on it, but it's also a little bit smaller. But although it's smaller in, in dimensions, like length and width, it's actually a little bit taller. And so it sticks up a little bit more. And I originally didn't think I was gonna like that, but last night I really did. And it was nice and warm. Um, I'm, still, I'm still absolutely amazed at how warm I was last night with that quilt, the under quilt, that incubator zero. Uh, full-length quilt man. I am like I said before I am sold on the full-length quilt now and that zero degree Even though it was overkill Was perfect. I mean it really I've never been more comfortable in my hammock and that's that's no lie. That's uh That's telling you the truth right there and I had the 20 degree burrow for my top quilt and honestly I Think that with that zero degree under quilt, I could probably take that that 20 degree down into the teens pretty easily. Gotta make sure I'm going the right way. A little trail junction there. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys more down the trail. Let's talk a little bit about the Palmetto Trail. So I just spent the last two days on the Palmetto Trail uh, doing the high hills of Santee Passage. And there's uh, only about 10 miles in that section, but I went a little bit, a little bit past there and I did a little bit of exploring while I was up at Poinsett State Park. So, will I do it again? Short answer, no. No, this, this trip just wasn't wasn't worth it for me. The uh, hi. Problem is, this is a multi-use trail, and so not only do you have hikers and bikers, which for the most part can get along. Um, you know, the amount of damage that a bike does to the trail is actually less than what a hiker and their boots will do. So. 
Um, then you come to the horses and they just tear the trail up. I mean, you get to a spot where yesterday it was, was pretty hard packed. Uh, I don't know if you remember what right as I was leaving, there were a bunch of horse trailers. Well, all of them went out for a trail ride and so they just churned up the trail really bad and then there's there's horse crap all over the trail as well so it stinks you gotta avoid stepping in it and it just tears up the trail horribly uh, so it makes it so that you know the bike riders can't ride through it because it's been churned up so bad that it's like six inches of sand it makes it a whole lot harder to hike through and uh, just not not a whole lot of fun plus anyone who knows me knows that I don't like double track and the majority of the trail that I've experienced on the Palmetto Trail both here and even down in the Swamp Fox section is pretty much double track you know it's it's maybe one and a half in the uh, Swamp Fox section but it's definitely double track pretty much Jeep road quite a bit of the hiking on this section so for me I think this is the last time I'll be on the Palmetto Trail. Then, if you factor in the fact that it's poorly signed, uh, where there is signage, it doesn't agree. So, one section you're looking for the little Palmetto Trail signs. Another section you're looking for yellow diamonds. One section you're looking for the blazes that are the six inch by two inch with a dot on top. You're looking for them in the orange color in one spot. They turn to yellow in another spot, the red in another spot. Uh, it's just, it's very disjointed. You go through sections of the trail where literally for a mile, every 20 feet, it's marked. Then you go through sections where for two miles, you don't see a, a marking and there's trail junctions and you have to guess <laughs> as to which one it is. And uh, you know, today I made one wrong guess, got off trail for a little while, but you know, I got myself back on and it's fine. Well, anyway, I've got a little bit of a trail walk here or a road walk uh, to get back to my, my truck, but this hike is pretty much over. It's uh, New Year's Eve today, so I'm gonna go home, spend some time with the wife and the kids and enjoy it. Uh, I don't know if I'll get this posted before New Year's Day, but if I do, anybody who's watching this, have a very safe and happy New Year's Eve. And let's, uh, let's do better in 2017. How about that? All right, guys. You guys know what, what to do. If you like what I'm doing, go down, click on the subscribe button. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put up some links to a couple people that have done more trail, uh, more Palmetto Trail stuff. I'll put up a link to the Palmetto Trail um, website so that you guys can go if you have, have any questions or, or want to learn more about the trail. Um, but for me, I think my days on the Palmetto Trail are done. Uh, I'll focus on the trails that I like, the ones that are actually hiking trails, like the Appalachian Trail. I still got to get out and do the Foothills Trail. I know Shug and a whole bunch of other people have gone and done that one, so that was definitely on my list. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in, coming along with me on this New Year's hike, and uh, you guys get out there and do it. I'll see you down the trail. Thanks. Ah, another great trip down. You know, I may not have completely liked the trail, but I definitely did enjoy myself. So, time to get this stuff off, hit the road, and head home. And I will see you guys next time I'm out. See ya.